Do you know a steel column can develop moment even in simple construction? In this tutorial, you will learn design of beam columns as per Eurocode 3. This is part 16 of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, have a look at description down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. Before you start watching these worked examples in beam column design tutorial, I strongly suggest that you watch these parts which are prerequisite for this lecture. Part 9, 10 compression member design, part 13, 14 unrestrained beam design, part 15 beam column lecture which will give you theoretical background to these worked examples. The link to these lectures and tutorials is down below in description. In this tutorial, I will solve three examples. The first two examples are related to column and simple construction, where I will use the simplified equation 6.2. And the third example is related with use of a very complicated equation where we had two equations. We have to check both of these equations. I will use this equation 6.2 in first two examples. In third example, I will use these complicated equations using a simplified uh, procedure as mentioned in the steel construction designer's manual. Let us solve our first example. In first example, I have this beam to column joint where the moment is induced through eccentricity. And this is the formula for eccentricity. This is external column and applied moment is V times E where V is the shear force and E is the eccentricity. This is about major axis of the column. Now, this is the column which is connected to three beams, level one, level two, and level three. They are shown, and this is the plan of the column. R2 is inducing reaction. On the left side, you can see that there's nothing. Top, I have R1, and bottom, I have R3. Length, L12 is five meter, L23 is, is three meters. And columns are connected with flexible end plates, and the construction is a simple construction. And we have to try this section 203, 203 by 46, you can see. These section properties are obtained from section table. The axial load is given 277 kilonewton. Reaction from beam one is 37 kilonewton. Beam two is 147. Beam three is 28. So the total load which is being supported on this column is combination of these reaction, which comes out to be 589 kilonewton. First, we have to work out the moment. So moment at level two R at level two, which is the major axis direction as only one beam was connected. Simply we have R2, which is the reaction. H over two is I think 203 divided by two. If we combine it and if we convert this into meters, we get 0 0.206 and the resulting moment is 29.6 kN. M to ZED is the minor axis moment. This is the minor axis. In minor axis, you can see that two beams are connected. That's the reason we will say R1 ED minus R3 ED, and TW is the thickness of web. If we put all these value, if we convert this into meters, we get this 0.9 kN meter. Now, these end moments are distributed between the column lengths above and below level two in proportion of their bending stiffness. Now, moment acting on column between level one and two are M2 YED times the length of the column above divided by combination of lengths at, at the level below. So in that way, we get 11.9 kN. In the minor axis direction, it will be again the same stiffness. We get 0.3 kN. The UK practice is that if the stiffness of the column do not differ by greater than 1.5 times, the moment is usually halved between them. But here, this is not the case. So that's why we have used the exact ones. Now here, we will not perform certain checks. We will not classify the section because this is UKC and the steel grade is 275. So it will be class one or two section. We will not choose the cross-sectional resistance for axial and bi-axial bending. The reason is that because here buckling resistance will dominate. That is the reason we will not carry out this check. We will not check the shear resistance because shear is not a big problem. We will not check the major axis bending because it is not critical for UKC. And we are using the formula for simple construction. So bending will happen in minor axis. And we will also not check major axis N plus M. We will simply use the simplified formula 6. 
0.2 because the bending moment distribution is going to be triangular. So we will use the simplified formula. First is flexural buckling, then I will use lateral torsional buckling. And I will use the design procedure for, for flexural buckling and for lateral torsional buckling. For flexural buckling, I will use this design procedure. Classify the I'm not classifying the section, lambda dash, and then finding out the buckling capacity using this formula. For lateral torsional buckling, I will use these design steps. I will use this equation of MBRD and KLT. This is the design process for buckling resistance for unrestrained beams. If you are interested in full design procedure for unrestrained beams and columns, please have a look at YouTube tutorials. The link is down below in the description. Now, first we have to work out the lambda dash one, which comes out to be 86.1. Lambda dash Z, again, LCR over IZ, we got these values from section table. It comes out to be 1.12 about weaker axis, which makes sense because for practical columns, the range of lambda dash Z is from 0.2 to 1.2. For UKC section, the buckling curve is C and alpha comes out to be 0.2. 4.9, this is from table 6.3 and 6.1. For lambda dash Z, 1.12. And for curve C from table 6.3, by linear interpolation, we get this value of 0.472. From here, we get key LTS 0.472. NBZ RD is key, Z AFI over gamma M0 A is from section table, we get 762. And then I will find out the buckling resistance when lambda dash LT, I'm using the simplified formula, although it will give me conservative results, but I will use this 0.9 into 1.123, it is giving me 1.01. For roll I sections, H over B less than 2, I will use curve B. And then again, the design process is mentioned as already I've shown in the slides. So lambda dash LT is 0.34 using equation 6.57, psi is equal to zero for the worst case scenario. I am getting ELT as 0.686. So again, I will find out MBRD, which comes out to be 93.9 kilonewton meter. Because the case of uniform single curvature moment is the most severe one, a safe design process has psi equal to one, which means that this is the worst case scenario. This is the moment diagram. You have psi equal to one. No reduction of flexural buckling about minor axis is required. Simply, I will use WPLLZ. I will simply put these values, I will get MBZRD. Then combined bending and axial compression check, we will use simplified equation. This is the one which we use in simple construction. If I put all these values, this is less than one. It means that UKC section 203, 203 by 46 is adequate. NED over MBZRD, it's been close to 0.9. The effect of biaxial moment would be relevant to the, to the section choice. Now I will move to my second example and I will use this same equation 6.2 in my second example. This second example, it has been taken from P387 steel building design worked example for students and I'm solving this example five column in simple construction and this is my example two. The actions are given self weight of the floor, which is 3.7 kN. Variable actions are given 3.3. We add them up. Imposed floor loads are given, imposed roof loads are given as well. So we add them up. Wind action is given, which is not relevant over here. This is the building footprint. We have to design internal column at ground for a level grid G2. We have to design this column. So it will have tributary area six, average of six and eight will be seven. Now, first we have to work out the actions from eight meter span beams. We will multiply with the structural grid, which is eight by six times it by permanent loading. It is divided half and half. We get this reaction. And again, this reaction for variable action for six meter span beams. The grid over there is six by six. Grid on the right side is six by six. On the left side, it is eight by six. These are the beams which are applying loading over here. Total load acting on column due to three floors is given by three times these uh, loadings. And then simply you can see that the roof load is not coming on this because this is the internal column. It is not carrying roof loading. So from here we get uh, GK and QK. 
1.35 and 1.5, these are safety factors. If we add them up, the factored load on column is 1206 kilonewtons. The reaction from 8 meter beam is given by these values. Again, we factor it with the permanent and variable. We get 230 kilonewton. We factor the other loads from 6 meter beam. We get 172. Now we are trying this section 254254 by 73. Properties are obtained from section table. Yield is S275. The cross section is assumed to be class 1 or 2, so we are not checking the classification. The buckling length is 5 meter in both directions. And we are assuming that beam reactions are acting at 100 millimeter away from the column section. In minor axis, the beams at the internal columns are identical. So there's no need for minor axis moment because the distance is six and six from both sides. So we will not, it will not create any moment. If on major axis, you can see this span is six and this is eight. On the minor axis, we have six and six. So we have equal span, so they will not generate any, any moment at all. So that's the reason in minor axis, there is no moment. Now, major axis, you can see on one side, we have 172. On other side, we have 230. So simply, we will put these into this equation, E times V, and then we get 13.2. Now, this has to be distributed in column lengths above and below in proportion to their bending stiffness, unless the ratio should not exceed 1.5 in which case the moment is to be divided equally. As the ratio of column stiffnesses is less than five, the design moment has to be divided equally. That's why I have multiplied 0.5 over here. MZED is zero because we don't have anything on the other side. So it means that we will just be counting one moment. Now, simply I will work out lambda dash Z in the same way as I have done in columns. LCR is 500 IZ from a section table curve is C from figure 6.4. Key Z is 0.61. We multiply this reduction factor with the area we get NBZ RD. We have NBZ RD now, and then we want to determine the lateral torsional buckling. So I'm using the quick formula lambda dash LT 0.9 lambda dash Z 0.9 lambda dash Z is 0.89. So lambda dash for LTB is 0.8. Key LT using this formula. So if I put all these values again table 6.5 and table 6.3 in euro code alpha lt comes out to be 0.34 if i put all these values over here i get v lt and again putting it back into this equation of t lt i'm getting 0.81 which is reduction factor for a moment again if i put all these values I will get MBRD, ELT, WY, FY. It will give me MBRD as 221. Now I will use this simplified formula. So NED, I worked out NBZRD, I worked out MYED, uh, we worked out, and NBYRD, we worked out earlier, which is this one. And in Z direction, certainly we didn't have anything. So that's why we did not work this out because MZED was zero. Now, combination of all this comes out to be less than one. It means that section 254254 by 73 UKC is fine. Now, I have finished this example. I finished this example. Now, I will move to the third example. So I will now use these equations to work out the capacities of the column. It is very difficult to use these table method too. So, I will use this simplified conservative approach for interaction factors, which is mentioned in Steel Designers Manual uh, by Steel Construction Institute, seventh edition. So let's see how we can do it. We have UKC again, S275 steel combination 840 compression and uniform bending is given to us over here. The column height is given. The, the section is pinned, but it has the section has applied moment at top and bottom. The member capacity minor axis bending is approximately 1400. These geometric properties are obtained from section table. Material properties and cross-sectional resistance check. Actually, there is no need for cross-sectional check, but we will check it in any way. This is giving us class one section under pure compression, which is the worst case scenario. Stress distribution from compression and plus bending, certainly it is the favorable one. So which means that if it is class one under the worst case scenario, which is pure compression, then almost certainly it will be class one when we have combination of compression and bending. Let's find out effective lengths because the column is pinned. So we have LCR is equal to one times L in major and minor axis, non-dimensional slenderness. We find out lambda one, lambda dash Y, we get this value 0.46 in major axis, lambda dash Z, we get this 0.8. 
in Z direction. And then buckling curves for H over B less than 1.2. For major axis buckling, we have curve B 0.34. And for minor axis buckling, we have curve C 0.4. 49 and we get these values from table 6.2. The reduction factors again phi y we will put all these values into this equation and we get phi y 0.65 again this is clause 6.3.12 and we put these values in the reduction factor we get 0.9. This is the reduction factor for major axis for, for column and for minor axis again I will use the values for minor axis we get this 0.96. So lambda dash z I will put these values for minor axis. I'm getting 0.66, which is less than one, which is fine. Then I will find out the buckling resistance in major and minor axis. So in major axis, it comes out to be 1892, which is greater than applied. It means it is fine. And in minor axis, I have 1395, which is greater than applied as well. So this is okay. Then I will find out minor axis bending resistance. So minor axis bending resistance will be equal to WPLZ into FY over gamma M naught. This is giving me 83.9 kilonewton meter. And so to verify the resistance uh, under combined axial and bending, both equations 6.61 and 6.62 must be satisfied. The major axis term is absent in this since MYED is zero. Major axis bending is not happening here because there is nothing attached in a major axis. The major axis bending is not happening. So this term will go away. And again, major axis is not happening here. So I will simply be left with KYZ and KZZ, these two terms. The maximum values KYZ is taken from table 18.6. This is the one in the steel design manual. And KYZ is 0.6 KZ and KZZ is 2.4 CMZ. KYZ is 0.6 KZZ and KZZ is equal to 2.4 CMZ. So if I go back here for this if I increase this size for uniform bending for psi equal to one, I have, I'm assuming that I have uniform uh, bending moment applied for psi equal to one. If I have a look at this table, table B3, you can see that for psi between minus one and one, I have this 0.6 plus 0.4 psi where if you put value of psi is equal to one this will give me value of one for these cmy values cmz is equal to one from this table when cmz is equal to one if i go back here for psi equal to one cmz is equal to one from table b3 of bse uh, euro code three which i showed you a little earlier so if i put this value back in here which is KZZ is equal to, this is not 1.4, this is 2.4. This is a mistake in the book. So 2.4 times 1, So this is giving me 2.4. And if I put this value back in here, it will give me 0.6 times 2.4, so which is 1.4. So it means that now KYZ is 1.44 and KZZ is 2.4. Now, if I put these values into these two equations, 6.4, 6.61 and 6.62. Now here you can see that the major axis factors are gone. I found out NBYRD just putting these values. KYZ we found out 1.44. MZ is 12 and MCZ is 83.9 in minor axis. And remember that there's no reduction required in the minor axis. From here I'm getting 0.65 which is less than 1. It means that it is fine. Again I will put these values in the second equation which is 6.62. And here I have NBZRD, which is 1395. NED remains the same. KZZ is a factor we found out earlier. And 12 is the applied moment. And 83.9 is the moment capacity in Z direction. Now, this will give me 0.95. Now, this is okay as well. This means that I can use this section 203, 203 by 60. With this, you can use this simplified formula for simple construction. The use of 6.61 and 6.62 is really tedious and it requires Excel sheet. We have used this conservative approach to find out the moment capacity. Otherwise, for buildings, most of the time, joints are pinned and bracing provides lateral stability. In that case, use of equation 6.2 will be most suitable. But if you are designing portal frames or where joints are rigid, then by all means, use this generalized procedure and have Excel sheet.